Good afternoon. Nice to see you all. Uh, let me start out with a, a brief announcement. The, uh, as you know, we mentioned before that uh, FNA 18s will be leaving uh, Beaufort, South Carolina, for Hungary soon. The first group of 150 Marines and sailors departed the Marine uh, Corps Air Station in Beaufort today aboard an Air Force C-17 and the uh, Hornets will follow tomorrow 24 FNA-18Ds. Altogether, that this deployment in Hungary, Tezar Hungary, will uh, involve about 800 Marines and sailors, all of whom should be in place at the first part of next week. Uh, and uh, I have one other thing to say about this uh, map here. You know from your, from listening to the NATO briefing and other briefings today that we're getting more and more reports of demonstrations uh, against uh, the war and against the Milosevic government in Serbia, central Serbia. And the three places that have been mentioned are listed on this map. Uh, you, can, you can see them there. The most uh, dramatic uh, demonstrations uh, seem to be in Kusevac. And uh, uh, we believe that there have been fairly uh, large desertions recently from units in Kosovo who are trying to get back to Kusevac. Um, there were reports on Radio Free Europe that water hoses were used against women and children who were protesting the fact that their uh, husbands or uh, fathers, loved ones were uh, uh, being killed in Kosovo, and apparently the government had withheld information about the degree of loss uh, from the people. And as they these reports began to filter back, a demonstration started, we believe, on the 16th of May. So they've been going on for several days in all three of these towns. We mentioned two of the towns yesterday, uh, the new town of Kasak. Um, has been added. Uh, we just learned about that today. The demonstrations also have been going on there. And these have been reported in the Montenegrin press and in other uh, uh, local press uh, in Yugoslavia in the last uh, day or two. But our understanding is that the approximately 500 soldiers, maybe more, maybe as many as 1,000 by some accounts, have left units in Kosovo and tried to move back to uh, Kusevac. Uh, in order to uh, stop what they consider to be the mistreatment of their um, of their families uh, by the special police, the uh, I think there there are two important points to make about this. One, if the accounts we're getting are correct, that people are now just learning for the first time about the uh, the impact of NATO's attacks in Kosovo. Uh, it's clear that the, uh, the Serbs have been afraid to reveal this information and probably been afraid also to reveal the information about ethnic brutality and other activities that the special police and the Serb army have been undertaking in Kosovo. And they've also been afraid to reveal the full magnitude of the, of the losses in Kosovo. Just to give you one indication of those losses uh, because of NATO air attacks, um, I've said here several times before that the uh, Serbs have been marshalling artillery and other forces along the border between Kosovo and Albania on the one hand and Kosovo and Macedonia on the other hand. They actually started doing this uh, in uh, March before uh, the uh, NATO Operation Allied Force began. And one of the consequences of doing that is that they have massed artillery along the borders. Um, we believe they've been doing this because they suspect or assume that they'll be in, uh, invaded by NATO forces. Uh, so they have massed artillery along the borders, and the massed artillery is uh, relatively easy for NATO planes to target. And we have been targeting that and have now, we believe, removed the majority of the, uh, of the artillery in Kosovo, perhaps uh, as much as 90 percent of the artillery in Kosovo in the last several weeks by attacking massed art, uh, artillery along the borders. Um, we've also made significant uh, progress against the uh, APCs and the uh, tanks, uh, taking out uh, probably about a third 
or more of the total armored vehicles, uh, as well as many other vehicles, such as trucks, supply trucks, fuel trucks, et cetera, uh, in Kosovo. So these um, protests are continuing. Uh, there were supposed to be uh, more protests today, uh, what we understand from public reports, media reports in uh, Montenegro. And um, obviously, there's a possibility that they'll spread, although we can't uh, know for sure whether they, uh, whether they have until we see uh, more evidence uh, about what's happening. Can you clarify just one thing on, on your sourcing on the 500 to 1,000 troops? Is your sole source um, press reports, or are there other indications that you have gotten? Um, they, uh, we have other indications of the desertions. Uh, those do not come from press reports. Uh, they come from other sources of information. The, the uh, source for the demonstrations comes uh, largely from press reports, uh, including uh, Pansevo Radio, for instance, um, has talked about, uh, uh, Pansevo Radio said, uh, uh, that yesterday, on May 18th, the, uh, uh, an informal protest group in, in Kasak called the Citizens' Parliament condemned the NATO bombing campaign, but also called on the state leadership to find a way to end the destruction of their already impoverished country and uh, stop the killing of civilians and soldiers. This was according to Pansevo Radio. That the desertions are desertions uh, and not just a withdrawal of forces um, to those towns. In other words, Milosevic has said we're withdrawing some of our forces out of Kosovo. You're certain that that you are seeing desertions, not a withdrawal, a withdrawal of those forces to their hometown. Based on what we know now, uh, we're pretty certain that they are desertions. That these are people who are leaving against their orders and have decided to return to their homes for, uh, uh, for various reasons. And we think it's military like this. Isn't it surprising that uh, they would allow their forces to say, eh, we're out of here uh, without stopping them, shooting them, getting in their way? Well, I think there's been an element of that. I think there has been some resistance. That's why we think it's a desertion rather than a uh, phased withdrawal. There are signs that the Serb military has tried to stop them in some there way. Are, there are indications that there have been uh, uh, disputes, if not fights, over uh, the effort of, of these uh, 500 to 1,000 troops. I think conservatively, we'd have to say 500 troops. NATO has used the figure 1,000. It could well be as high as 1,000. Units leaving uh, deserting? It is uh, our impression that uh, battalion level units are leaving. All out of one place or split out? Um, it's, uh, it's hard to know at this stage, but um, they, they come from one brigade. They're battalions from one brigade. Yes? Maybe another way of diverting the situation. Uh, Pardon? The, maybe the Yugoslavian dictator thinking that he can di divert the situation. Perhaps he does, but it's hard to know that uh, uh, it's hard to know that it's hard to see how demonstrations against the government would be a diversionary tactic uh, by President Milosevic. Um, these seem to be uh, demonstrations against the regime. Uh, they're demonstrations that uh, express dismay um, over the losses that the Serb army is suffering. And they are generated by, the, we believe, the families of soldiers. That's what's been reported, at any rate, on uh, Podgorica television and Pansevo radio and some of the other. Uh, yeah. These are all amphibious reports. I mean, you can get copies of these broadcasts and the read them units yourself. Units appear to be leaving with their officers. I don't know. I don't think we know a lot about the makeup, uh, but they do seem to be leaving with some equipment. I know that you've had the the softest figures you've had are are on Serb casualties or military casualties. At this point, do you have any idea of how severe the, uh, the casualty toll has, that has been inflicted by the NATO campaign? Is there any, any way to characterize it at all? No, except that, uh, that President Milosevic last week talked about many, many casualties. Uh, but beyond that, we don't have any, any numbers on what that might be. Um, Bill. The announcement of artillery being moved close to the borders. Can you tell us any more details uh, about, uh, say, tanks being moved, troops 
uh, being moved down there, uh, troops being moved uh, to play, replace those troops that are being put on the borders, uh, the refugee camps in range of the artillery, et cetera? Well, um, I'm not aware that refugee camps are in range, but we do know that there is from time to time shelling across the border from Kosovo into Albania. Um, that's been going on sporadically from before March 24th, but certainly since March 24th as well. Um, I'm not aware that they have been moving uh, uh, artillery or armor down to replace the artillery they're losing, in part because it's becoming increasingly clear to them that when they move their artillery, um, we can uh, find it and target it. I know General Wald has showed uh, pictures of a predator uh, following the movements of tanks, of an individual tank. Remember the one that ran over a house that we saw, I think, two weeks ago? Uh, so. Uh, or ran over a car, that's right. And um, so we are able to monitor this as it moves. And one of the things that we've been working on, and General Wald could talk about this in more detail, is getting this information quickly into the cockpits of the planes that are waiting offshore so they can go in and strike against moving targets. Yes, Otto. Uh, you all gave that uh, informative briefing yesterday on the MLRS system that are deployed in Albania. And the, uh, the talk about artillery on the border, the shelling across the border in Albania, the, uh, the, the reports of uh, the Serbs digging in uh, along the borders to stop a suspected ground attack. I'll leave the question of why hasn't MRLS and the ATAC been used against those kind of targets? They're, they're very effective against those kind of targets, and they, uh, they come at relatively low cost to us. Uh, they are very effective, but as I've just said, uh, uh, in citing figures that we've uh, eliminated a, a large portion of the Serb artillery, we believe that our A-10s and other planes have been very effective against these targets as well. Positions that are dug in along uh, in, in that area. We have been attacking those troop positions as well. They well, tend the to be. The weapon system that you have, they fall weather. When you're, you've been inhibited by the weather to do We are using the weapon system we have. They're called A-10s and they're called F-16s uh, and they're other planes, and we've been using them with considerable effect. Yes. So the net, net effect of, of, the, of all this is that the positions, the artillery positions and the concentrated troops on the border now are, there, is, there are far fewer of them than there were a few weeks ago? Well, we certainly have been pummeling. Um, I don't know whether we know what percentage we've removed. Uh, they have mortars and other things along there, too. Um, but to the extent we can locate the artillery and uh, target it, we've been doing that. And the artillery is less mobile than the tanks, obviously. It tends to be dug in, and uh, uh, therefore, while it, uh, it's bad news that they've stationed this uh, artillery there because it, um, it would make any movement into, uh, uh, into Kosovo more difficult, it's good news in that it makes it much easier to target. And this means that um, I think that one of the pressures they have to deal with is the heavy losses of artillery. Uh, and they have to wonder whether the, um, the, massed, the massed forces they put there would effectively be able to stop um, any troops from coming in. Of course, we don't plan to invade anyway. We plan to go in after a peace agreement. But um, uh, to the extent that there is less artillery to worry about, even under peaceful terms, it's good news for us. On that topic, you mentioned a peace force going in. What is the U.S. view on, on when that should begin, that process should begin, a moving a force into the area? How soon and how much time do you have? Well, all this is being worked out by NATO now. They're in the process of reviewing the size, the composition of the force, um, how quickly it should be moved down. This obviously is a hot issue, and it's one of the topics that the British have been talking about, for instance, and in saying that we should get troops down there because we might have to move in quickly. So far, we don't have a peace agreement, and we're not close to one, although there's more and more talk and greater efforts to achieve a diplomatic solution. We hope there is a diplomatic solution, and we think that we, the U.S., would be able to move forces down there quite quickly. Um, but when? Any, any, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. How? <clears throat> well, we could certainly move significant forces down there in a matter of, uh, I would say, days, um, if we can work out sequencing with humanitarian aid and other things. But um, this is exactly the type of question that NATO is trying to work out now. 
about the diplomatic initiatives? You mentioned diplomacy with uh, Talbot and Colonel Merton and the President of Finland. Any word on how that's moving? Will they I have no progress more? report to make on that. Can, uh, the, the units um, uh, that are deserting in those clashes uh, that involve them, are, are those, do those appear to be clashes between Army units or between Army and MUP units? I don't know the answer to that. Yes, ma'am. Um, prior to the pummeling along the borders, how are the, how are the Serb troops dispersed throughout the country? Because there's still a good deal of fighting, um, according to NATO, in the central part between UCK and, and Serb troops. There continues to be uh, uh, fighting between the uh, Kosovar Liberation Army, or UCK, on the one hand, and the uh, Serb Army and Special Police Forces on the other. That, you know, moves around from place to place. The KLA is operating like a, uh, a true guerrilla movement and attacking targets of opportunity and then receding. Um, they're not holding towns or territory at this stage. Do you know the ratio between troops that are concentrated on that sort of fighting and the others that are dug in? I, I, we, I don't at this stage know how that's divided. Yes. Do, do you have any idea where in Kosovo these units are that are deserting in large numbers? And uh, should we wonder about the credibility of the reports? And would it be wise for a soldier to desert in what in the middle of a very hostile place and among people who have good reason to fear and hate him and would, would attack him? I mean, the, the KLA is operating there, and that's right. Well, as I say, they seem to be leaving in groups, and they're taking some equipment with them, so uh, they have uh, been able to. Uh, uh, do this there in northern Kosovo, so it doesn't take them long to get back to their their areas. But um, you'll have to ask them. Uh, I mean, you can't ask them, but I mean that's a good question, I think, and it may be a sign of the disarray, a sign of the fear, and the sign of the impact that the NATO strikes are having on the forces now. Now we'll have to watch this and see if if more if this was an aberration or if this is the beginning of a trend. I don't think we know at this stage. I'm sorry, can you say a little more exactly where in northern Kosovo? If you're saying battalion-sized units and 500 to 1,000 deserters, I guess you're just talking about one, two, maybe three incidents, right? There could be, uh, I don't, I think the battalion is probably around 200 people. So it could be, uh, it could be several battalions. It could be larger than that. Uh, all we know really is, is, is really from northern Kosovo that they seem to be moving and that where they're going is up to this this town of Kusevac. It's where they tend to be heading. These guys are on the road right now, as far as you know? I don't know exactly where they are. That's the We have not observed them because of the weather. Uh, we don't have pictures. We don't have pictures. So uh, where do they stand, if you do see them, where do they stand on the U.S. targeting list? Well, um, uh, we have said that we would um, uh, uh, continue to attack forces until there's a ceasefire and a withdrawal plan that's been laid out and that we see evidence that it's happened. So even if somebody's heading north, so to speak, they're still subject to attack? They can come back. And the other question I have is, hitting all this dug-in artillery along the border, to what extent does that basically help the KLA conduct cross-border operations? Well, if it does help them, it's a subsidiary benefit. Um, but the main reason we're doing this is to, uh, is to try to eliminate dug-in positions and to reduce the force, which is, after all, a military goal, to diminish the size of the force. But does reducing it 90 percent help the KLA? Well, it certainly uh, reduces the, uh, the opposition they face, but there still is some, uh, there's some sporadic firing from time to time across the border. Yes. As you've described the situation with the deserting troops, uh, uh, obviously suggests that they are getting information about what's happening back in their hometowns. How do you believe that that information is is getting around? And do you, I mean, is it likely that you know a lot of the troop, the served troops in Kosovo, are aware of circumstances back you know back home? What's been reported is that they were getting the information on Radio Free Europe. So they must have uh, they must have shortwave radios that allows them to get that information. Yes. There was a report on uh, Yugoslav news agency, uh, in which in which the report claimed that a NATO bomb had hit a village called Niglani. I can't pronounce it. G N I G L A N E, uh, killing 15 civilians who were being held in a construction site near a restaurant. Do you have anything on that? Um, uh, 
NATO is looking into that now. That village is uh, is a little uh, is near Pristina, in Kosovo, and um, we are looking into that now. The way you cited it, it sounds like another human shield incident. Um, if that's what the report is, that these civilians are being held at a construction site, but NATO is in the process of, of uh, looking at what, what may have happened there. In, yes? In the, the Wall Street Journal had a story saying that NATO has agreed to a force, or the military committee had agreed to a force of about 45,000 from the 28,000 talked about last summer. This is for going into Kosovo. Can you give a sense of whether those are accurate figures in the rough order of magnitude? Yes. 45,000 is? 45, 50,000. Is it kind of soup right now, or will we have some details over the next day or two? Well, you know, the process is that this is, starts with the military committee and then moves on to the North Atlantic Council. And um, the North Atlantic Council can send items back to the military committee for more work, for refinement, greater analysis. I don't know whether they will or they won't. But we've been saying for some time that the uh, K-4, the so-called Kosovo Peace Implementation Force, would probably have to be larger than 28,000, given the amount of devastation that's taken place in Kosovo. And this is uh, uh, one indication that it will, in fact, be much larger. Well, since you're giving some, some numbers, can you just say whether it's reasonable to expect that the U.S. contribution then, which was going to be about 4,000 troops, would increase somewhat if there were yes. talking about would probably, I don't think the President has made a decision on this. Remember, he made the decision last time uh, to contribute 4,000 troops, but I think you could uh, could anticipate a proportional increase, which would be, you know, in the range of 7,000 or so. When you say troops, you, troops could move within weeks down to the region, were you talking a potential 45,000 contingent or just the U.S. contingent? Well, first of all, there are already 13,000 NATO troops in Macedonia. And there are uh, another, um, well, we have 6,000 troops now in Albania, including Task Force Hawk and some Air, Air Force uh, people who run the, uh, run the airport in Tirana, uh, basically run the 24-hour day air traffic control system. And then we have some Red Horse, Air Force Red Horse teams there helping to build um, Camp Hope and the other uh, refugee camps we're constructing. And there's some contract work there as well. Uh, and I think there are other NATO troops, probably a couple thousand other NATO troops in Albania. So there were some there already. One of the questions is whether these troops are properly constituted to form the core of a peacekeeping force. Now, the troops in Macedonia are. They went down under the, uh, the uh, Rapid Reaction Corps, NATO's Rapid Reaction Corps, under the, the command of uh, Lieutenant General Mike Jackson. And uh, they were there positioned there to be the leading edge of a, uh, of a peacekeeping force. I think what we would do is fall in on that and, and build it up. Well, in Macedonia, there are very few Americans. There are some Marines, um, a small number of Marines in Macedonia. Most of our troops, the vast majority of them, uh, 90 percent, 95 percent are in Albania. 7,000 figure, is that an increase of 7,000 or is that a total of 7,000? <coughs> would be a total. Military committees make a recommendation. This is a squishy figure. This has not been worked out. Forty-five to 50,000 squishy figure that the military committee came up with. Did they also make a recommendation as to the U.S. participation? In no. That? Generally, that comes at a later stage. They deal in gross numbers, and then uh, as it works through uh, the process, it's refined, and, and uh, individual countries say how much they'll provide to meet the overall total, and we're probably uh, a little ways away from that right now. Yeah, just like to add, uh, one thing about uh, the desertions. Um, are, are we to understand that the Yugoslav army is organized, uh, it's, it's the, the units are arranged somewhat in the way that they were 100 years ago in the United States, and that individual units all came from a particular state or a particular area, and your suggestion is that each of these battalions came from this particular city? Or, I mean, is that, is that what you're These, saying? These uh, could be reservists, and that would be particularly true in the case of reservists. You're not sure if they're reservists, so. uh, We think they probably are reservists. Ken, two very quick ones. <coughs> one, uh, any word on the interdiction slash blockade? And two, will uh, General Clark meet with us while he's here? Um, the answer to each question is, uh, is uh, I think, no. Okay. Uh, has General Clark or anyone else uh, 
are, are they doing any planning on a possible forced entry into Kosovo? Or, I mean, if there's a situation where you have a military collapse and uh, units leaving their leaving their uh, positions and so on. The 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 NATO planning now is focusing on the uh, peace implementation force. There is ongoing this reassessment that was announced just before the Washington summit nearly a month ago, still not complete. But that's a reassessment of an earlier assessment. Uh, and uh, uh, that is ongoing, but that's not complete. Thank you. Thank you. General Wall. Start with the weather, which has been uh, not very good over the last 24 hours, As a matter of fact very poor, <clears throat> as was predicted. So after the last 24 hours, poor weather uh, stayed real bad last night. We didn't hit a lot of targets, but we had some pretty significant ones I'll talk about. It's been increasing and improving over the last 24 hours. And then what'll happen over the next few days is you'll have a spike in here of some thunderstorms toward the afternoon, and then it should start improving uh, once again for the next few days uh, toward the end of the week. Uh, last night, as said, uh, a lot of weather, but we still hit some pretty significant targets. We hit five Soko P-2 uh, small aircraft that are used for counterinsurgency, and it turns out they've probably been used uh, possibly against some of the uh, targets that the uh, Serb or the VJ and MUP are attacking against the KLA. So that was a good hit. I'll show a film of that later. Radio relay site, an ammunition plant, some artillery. Mr. Bacon talked about that, a lot of that along the border. Some army barracks and then a petroleum storage area in Belgrade. Uh, which is right downtown Belgrade last night. Six major targets, yes, but there are several uh, dimpies on some of those. Uh, the total sorties to date, 22,626, of which strike the U.S. has flown uh, just under 3,000. The Allies pretty close to the same number. Uh, combat support, you can see here, a total of almost 9,000. And then combined support, uh, 7,000 for our total here of about 15,000 uh, direct combat type sorties uh, and bombs dropped to date 14,200. Uh, just a kind of a recap of one of the target areas we've been hitting. This, uh, these are the major runways uh, in the area that the uh, Fry have been using. You can see there's nine of those. Uh, the white ones here are, are all non-operational as of today and they've all been uh, taken down in several different ways. And then there's a couple of uh, assembly plants here that have been destroyed. The runway at Podgorica and, and Belgrade itself, of course, that being a civilian runway, has been not taken down. Uh, but the runways here, you can see, are either operational or non-operational, only two operational, and most of them infrastructure, some functionally destroyed, some moderately. But uh, they do have the capability to come back, repair that, and when they do, we'll go back and strike it again and hit it until uh, it's either non-functional forever or uh, Milosevic decides not to fly anymore. Uh, MiG-29s, uh, conservatively, probably 75%. I'd say it's probably even higher than that, maybe in the 80 percentile. MiG-21s, at least uh, greater than 30%. Galeb's over 35%, plus another 70-type aircraft, helicopters, and other small ones. I'll show five of those a little bit later. So that's just one target category. It's only a subcategory of IADs. So we'll continue to go ahead and hit those targets over the next uh, period of time. <clears throat> Not a lot of refugee movement. Uh, still some are moving out of the former Republic of Macedonia. Uh, and as you can see, then only a couple thousand into Bosnia over the last 24 hours. Contributions continue to come up uh, over the last 24 hours, uh, several increases in the tonnage, uh, and still some refugees moving to various countries, 28 total, uh, with the plan of about 160,000 in those countries to move on in. Fort Dix continues to uh, have refugees arrive. Yesterday I mentioned they were going to have almost 100 leave for uh, families and uh, on the civilian economy. Uh, that did not happen because they hadn't finished their medical uh, checks yet, so that should happen in the next day or two. Uh, but they continue to move into Fort Dix and they still are planning for no more than 4,200 at any one given time. Camp Hope is up to almost 2,000. It's getting close to completion. Uh, the NATO and uh, 
the uh, governmental agencies as well as UNHCR now are planning to move the refugees that are in the camps around Kukus, which are around 30,000, all of those uh, to southern Albania and to other camps, uh, primarily because the reservoir there, uh, turns out, will not have enough water to sustain them, so they're gonna move them to a better water source. Uh, and then the uh, International Red Cross has purchased 500,000 HDRs from a U.S. source. They'll be shipping those over, and as I mentioned, Fort Dix will be moving up to about 4,200 total capacity. Tell the people to be out of Kukas. It'll take a, a while till all the camps are built, but they'll be moving them out over the next uh, few weeks, I suspect, if they can do that. This is one of the airfields that was struck last night, this Pon, uh, Ponikve airfield, and you can see this is the actual runway here, and it's a little easier to see the strikes here. These are Mark 82s, probably 40 or 50 in a string. This is actually a taxiway over here, quite a ways from the runway, and there's some hardened aircraft shelters in this area. And as well as down here, I'll show you a couple of films of some aircraft uh, shelters that were struck with, uh, for certain, something inside, probably aircraft, and those were destroyed as well last night. So you asked about targets. This is one that had several hits on it last night. Uh, this is the area I just mentioned to you. You can see some holes in this part of the runway as well. These are some of the hardened aircraft shelters. They're actually hardened aircraft bunkers. There's dirt over the top of them. Uh, and I'll show you some imagery, of cockpit uh, imagery of that in just a moment. Uh, this is one of the radio, radio relay sites hit last night. This is one of the sub relay sites. We're going down through as different layers of robust uh, redundancy. Uh, it's not a real large site, but you can see the antenna laying here, and we'll just continue to take his command and control down uh, piece by piece, and we'll just continue to kind of mount up until he has a very difficult time uh, commanding and controlling his uh, fielded forces. This is a bridge uh, that I showed uh, a couple times already. Uh, one is there's a span here that was has some damage to it, not very much. There's a short round here that uh, I showed the other day, and then this particular span here has been taken out. We'll continue to take all of this. It's the same way with the command and control, bridges, locks, they all continue to take them down layer by layer. This is a picture of the bridge I just showed you that was on Serb TV yesterday. So it looks like it's pretty much uh, taken down. The good news here is it also covers the railroad track, so it stopped that part of the line of communication as well. <clears throat> Uh, the weather, as I said earlier, was uh, very poor over the last 24 hours. I'll show you that, show you what it was looking like earlier today. You run the film. As you can see, all the colors here uh, are clouds all the way up to probably 25, 30,000 feet moving over the Kosovo area, uh, layered all the way up and down, so it hindered quite a bit of the activity from yesterday. We only flew about 55 strike sorties which was low, but today is moving back up again. Uh, you can see as toward the end there, it started to clear up. This was the weather as of this morning. <clears throat> so you can see it's starting to clear up a little bit here, and it's getting a little bit better behind it. So the activity is stepping up now, and it looks like it'll clear out over the next 24 hours and improve ops, and we should be back up to the normal ops tempo. Command and control. Let's see, Preplovac uh, radio relay site. The northeast Kosovo. It's an F-15E, laser-guided bomb again. Some penetrating capability and took out the, it was covered with dirt that particular site. The sustainment, petroleum storage facility in Prohovo, eastern Serbia. We hit this over the last couple days. This is an F-15E, or excuse me, uh, this is an F-15E. You'll see there's one tank uh, already burning. And that one was struck there, and his uh, storage capacity for petroleum is going down fast. It's another weapon storage area in Sabac, Western Serbia, Serbia, F-16 with a laser-guided bomb. A 500-pound bomb, there's a little bit of a secondary in there, so there was something in there, the buildings destroyed. His IADS, Integrated Air Defense, which includes aircraft, runways, command and control, et cetera. This is an F-14 off the Theodore Roosevelt yesterday against a straight flush radar, one of his primary important radars for the SA-6. 
and we continue to take out his strategic SAMs. That's a good uh, secondary with that one. You'll see it billows up a little bit, and there's another part that will come off up here. That, so it was a obviously a manned site of some sort. This radar either had uh, fuel tanks with it or something. But you'll see it come off over here. There's a good secondary, so more than likely not a dummy. Hardened aircraft shelter at Panique Bay Airfield. This is the runway I showed you in imagery a moment ago. This is one of the hardened aircraft shelters I pointed out earlier. You can see they're under the dirt, so they're a little bit hard to pick out, but uh, we're fairly certain there was something in these shelters. There were secondaries. It's an F-16 with a laser-guided bomb. Good size secondary afterwards, the secondary explosion with burning. We think there are maybe Galebs in those bunkers, which is uh, what they're using for air to ground. This is another one of the shelters right next to it. It's another F 16 CG with a 2,000 pound laser guided bomb. So you can see those craters are from a previous strike to close the runway of a B 52. The end part of the string, probably 400 feet from the runway, and you'll see a fairly good secondary as the bomb comes in. It was probably a, a missile of something, some sort, maybe they had for the aircraft or some kind of weapon inside the bunker itself. You can see the two burning there. Forces on the ground. A towed artillery vehicle. Mr. Bacon mentioned the artillery. The artillery is being taken down significantly. Uh, Navy F-14, Theodore Roosevelt. They're dug in and uh, revetments, and when we find them, we'll just destroy them. Another revetted artillery, this is an F-16 CG yesterday, southwest Kosovo, along the border. You can see the revetment area. There's obviously something in the revetted area, a good size explosion. If there was an artillery piece in there, there isn't one anymore. This is a, a series of five uh, films I'll show you, and these are uh, Soko P-2 ground attack aircraft that are uh, in the, along the Albanian border in southern Kosovo. And these aircraft have been used for air to ground uh, in the past. They can carry small bombs, probably 250-pound bombs, 500-pound bombs, as well as uh, a gun and napalm. And we take five of these aircraft out last night. That's a small dirt type strip, uh, and they've been used for counterinsurgency ops by the uh, Yugoslavians in the past. Number two. Another one uh, in just a moment. They also have, uh, they don't, we haven't heard any reports of this, but in the uh, intelligence says they've carried napalm with these in the past. This bomb did not go off. It was a dud, but it hit the tail. So precision works. Another one right here. You can see the one with the tail off above it. <clears throat> so you can chalk up five Soko P-2 bomb aircraft that won't be attacking the KLA or the Kosovo Albanians anymore. When you were watching this airfield night after night to see if these airplanes would show up, and last night you were able to detect them fairly quickly and put troops, I mean, put aircraft on them? Uh, I think what it's an indication of is it's a, because of the familiarity with the area, kind of what you're alluding to, and the fact that the NATO pilots and our intel is getting more and more familiar with the movement and coming and going, that uh, in, in some cases that could happen where uh, we didn't see something here before, and then all of a sudden we did. So I'm not sure if that was the case here, but that wouldn't surprise me. So uh, it looked like there was enough time for the uh, the fire to to go away on each of the of the strikes. So there must have been some time between strikes. They didn't make any attempt to move those aircraft. Well, I'm not sure they're they're even dumb enough to go out and try to jump in an airplane that's being bombed. But not very many. There's usually probably a minute or so, minute or two. Has the uh, lull in the strikes been connected in any way to the diplomatic efforts, a desire not to? Uh... Not a bit. The only lull yesterday was due to weather, 100%. If the weather would have been good, they probably would have flown five or 600 sorties, combat. 
um, on napalm, has napalm been used from those planes against KLA? Or we have no reports of that. The, the that report of that type like of aircraft, one of the weapons, it, one of the weapons it could carry. Yeah, and I have no reports whether they have that at all. It's your choice of video lately or not, but we're not seeing a lot of SAM firings or AAA. Are you, are the crews noticing a lessening of anti-aircraft? Uh, it comes and goes. There were some, uh, I think last night, some, some, there was lots of AAA, there always is. You just don't see it on the film much. But uh, some uh, handheld SAMs were fired. Uh, I believe there are reports of a few, uh, an SA-3 or two, SA-6 type SAMs are still firing some, but sometimes they'll fire more than others. Why they do that? Uh, we're not sure, uh, but he obviously is having a problem uh, maintaining his ability to have a full integrated air defense system, and we're continuing to take down his important radars, his low blows for the SA-3, his S uh, straight flushes for the SA-6, fan song, but he still has some uh, elect uh, early warning type radars and some capability to communicate back and forth, but it's been degraded significantly, and he'll still try to husband that and use it at the right time, uh, maybe not as robustly as he did at the beginning where he just uh, fire away but he'll pick his moment and try to, to attack aircraft where maybe we're at least uh, he would think we were at least ready for it which they're still ready for it now watch for it sir the, the, has the logistics situation changed a lot the reason i ask is that it took um, you know a matter of weeks to get task force hawk in place and yet now we're talking about moving a larger force uh, there in a shorter time. So as they have the have the roads, the airports, the ports, uh, has that situation changed enough to move allow faster movement? Uh, are you talking about the force Mr. Bacon was yeah. talking about? Well, I think the point he was trying to make is there's a significant force in place already. When you talk about uh, the uh, NATO force that's in place in Macedonia, which I think is around 13,000, there's also the Allied Harbor Force that's uh, in Albania, several thousand. Uh, there's, a, uh, I think our contribution for that would be uh, the Allied Harbor Force, which is the uh, humanitarian, I think is around six or 700 already. I mean, you combine those up and, and a half, half the force, possibly if the number were the right number that Mr. Bacon was talking about is already in place. So I think that's kind of what he was alluding to. And, and plus we have airlift to get other forces in place, but uh, I'm not sure how long that would take, but you're already starting with a fairly large group of folks there in the first place. Yeah, General, Mr. Bacon mentioned that 90% of the artillery that's been destroyed, it looks like. What's your baseline figure, 90% of 400 or 500? What's the... I think what he was alluding to is along the border uh, area, particularly 90%. I'm not sure. Uh, I think that's what you're talking about, is 90% mostly along the border. I think the, the percentage of all of the fried Kosovo, of course, is, is lower than that. Uh, but the area along the southwest portion, I think there was an estimate there was 90, but of course they can move it back in from other places. So um, there's a significant portion of their artillery destroyed, but uh, not, not all of it. He said 90% of the artillery in Kosovo. I think that's what he just said. Southern. Yeah, I think the southern part of Kosovo is what he was alluding to. That's about 150 pieces was the total. Total universe or total destroyed? Uh, total universe, and we reckon that as much as 90% could have been destroyed. These are preliminary figures, but it seems that there have been a, ma a very concerted campaign to hit the artillery in recent days. Of the ones, the massed ones on the border? No, in all no. of Kosovo. Right. Uh, can I ask you the same question I asked the White House and the State Department, military viewpoint, that India and Pakistan are celebrating, according to the India Globe newspaper, first year of uh, their nuclear testing and missile. They are working on the missiles also like Agni-3, India, like 3,500 kilometers. And Pakistan said that we are going to celebrate 30, 18 days of nuclear testing and we will follow the 4,500 kilometer their missiles if India go for the same thing. The military viewpoint, I mean, the Pentagon concern about uh, the Mil um, military race and uh, nuclear and the missile race in South Asia. Yes. Especially India and Pakistan. Yes. I think the U.S. government has been very clear in expressing its dismay about the uh, missile and nuclear testing in both India and Pakistan. Uh, we think it was a step in the wrong direction, uh, that it uh, helped uh, end a period of, uh, of, uh, of progress in the nonproliferation front and actually reverse the progress of nonproliferation front. So this has been our position for some time. 
Thank you. But could I ask one more question for the general on, on troll, petroleum? Only if Charlie will let me. Okay. Go ahead. Thank okay. you. Thank you. We, we've, <laughs> seen, we've seen over the last two months an awful lot of concentration on bombing uh, patrol POL related targets. Right. I'm just wondering, what is, your, what is your assessment about the amount of fuel that they're getting in versus the amount of fuel that they're using for military operations? Are, we, are they, they, they seem to be sustaining military operations. Well, they're, they're sustaining it. For a, at a very, very low rate from the standpoint of moving their larger vehicles around. <clears throat> their airplanes aren't flying much. Uh, we're blowing most of them up. So from the standpoint of a lot of moving around, they're not doing a lot of moving around, so they don't use all that much fuel. If they were to have to move around a lot, it would be very hard for them to do that. What about how much they're getting in from outside the country versus how much they're using? I think for the, for the type of operations they're doing right now, the amount of movement they're doing, I think they have adequate fuel for that for a period of time. As we continue to hit their supplies and degrade that supply, which we'll do over time, it will be, uh, they'll have less and less opportunity to move around. Their fuel will just be depleted over time. You mentioned the one target in Belgrade, and you, and you said uh, petroleum storage, and you said it was in downtown Belgrade. Is that, is that right, or is it? Well, yeah, it is. Matter of fact, if you consider the Pentagon part of Washington, D.C., that's about how far it was from the center of town. Okay, sorry. Thank you.